This is the second lecture on acids and bases. In this part we are going to go into detail about what it means for an acid to be a strong or a weak acid and then we're going to look at how that affects the uh, calculations for pH, pOH, and Kw. In the previous lecture we had talked about how an acid and a base are both molecules that dissociate in solution. Acids will dissociate to make hydrogen ion and bases will dissociate to make hydroxide ion or they will absorb the hydrogen ion from the acid. So when you look at how much a substance dissociates that is what's referred to as the strength of the acid or the base. Strength does not have to do with how dangerous it necessarily is. When you want to know how dangerous an acid is you have to look at a couple things in combination. You need to look at the strength of the acid you need to look at the molarity or concentration of the acid and you need to know its pH. So um, the danger of an acid depends on a few factors. So if you were to look at a strong acid or a strong base, this is a molecule that will completely dissociate into ions. So what, what the meaning of strong is that it is going to make a solution that has a large concentration of ions. So it is very soluble. You're going to have, for example, a strong acid is going to have a large dissociation constant and it is going to make a lot of hydrogen ions. Um, a weak acid would not dissolve as much. It would only partially dissociate or it might even not dissociate all at all. And so it is going to have much fewer hydrogen ions. So it's going to make a weak solution or a solution that has less hydrogen ions. If we were to look at an example of a hydrochlor, uh, for example, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. So if we looked at a graph of the amount of each substance in a solution before and after it dissociates. Before dissociation, we see the molarity of hydrochloric acid here is very high and, at, and then the hydrogen ion and chloride ion is very low. So this makes sense because this is the beginning of a reaction. Once we have given the hydrochloric acid enough time to dissociate, we see that there is none of it left. It has completely broken down into hydrogen ions and chlorine ions. To give you a different perspective, hydrofluoric acid, HF, is a very weak acid. So we see after it has time, had time to dissociate, much of the HF still remains. Very little of it has ionized to make H and F. So the concentration of H and F, and most importantly, the concentration of hydrogen ion is very low in this solution. The concentration of hydrogen ion in the hydrochloric acid solution is very high and that's going to have an effect on the pH of the sample. If you want to test whether an acid is a strong or a weak acid, one way you could test that is by testing it with a conductivity tester. And so this is a very simple circuit that is set up where we have a power source such as a battery and it is in a complete circuit with a light bulb which gives us an indication that the current is flowing and that is also in a um, circuit with a solution and the solution has two electrodes here which dip into the solution and conduct the current from the circuit through the solution. Now if this solution contains a lot of ions then this substance is referred to as an electrolyte because it is going to allow the electric current to th flow through it. One way you can remember that is that if it is an electrolyte the electricity will light the bulb so it's an electrolyte. So if we have a strong acid it is going to be a very good electrolyte because it will have a lot of charged particles. If we have a weak acid it is going to be a poor electrolyte because there will be relatively few particles. Let's look at an example of this. In this lab simulation from Iowa State University's chemistry department, we can test different acids and we can look at how they affect the, um, the um, conductivity of this circuit. So if we have a substance that we put in the beaker here and we expect that it will conduct electricity, when we flip the on switch, we'll find that the light bulb will turn on. If this is a very weak conductor, the light bulb might go on, but it will not be as bright. If the substance is not conductive, if it is not an electrolyte, then we will see that the light will not go on. So let's look at HCl. That was the first graph we looked at, and we know HCl is a very strong acid. 
Notice that the molarity is set at one molar, so I can't change the concentration. But what we know about a weak acid or a strong acid is that just because there is one molar HCl in the solution does not mean that the entire one mole of per liter of the HCl is actually going to dissociate. So we know HCl is a very strong acid, so we expect that most of it will dissociate. So we expect that there will be a lot of hydrogen ions and chlorine ions, which will allow the electricity to be conducted. So we see that when we connect the circuit that it, it glows very, very brightly. This doesn't surprise us because we know it's a strong acid and we know that there's a lot of charged particles. Let's reset this and let's use hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid, which we know is a weak um, a weak acid. Because it's a weak acid, I would expect that the light bulb would not be lit as brightly because I know that even though there is one molar of HF in this solution, not all of it has dissociated. So much of it may remain as the um, electrically neutral compound here as HF, which is not charged, and HF being not charged, it will not conduct electric current. And as we suspect, we see that the light does go on, but it goes on at a very dim, um, a very dim level because there is very little of the um, ions present in this solution because this is a weak acid. If you're interested in that lab simulation, it can be found down here. I've provided the link. So when we measure concentration, that is used to determine pH. So concentration, just as we learned in the last unit, is measured in either mass percent or molarity. However, if you are determining pH by using this formula where pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen, this concentration is measured in molarity. So what does pH stand for? Well, there's a couple different ideas, but pH, some people think it comes from P as in potential hydrogen ion, meaning how much hydrogen there could be in the solution, or because pH is an exponential, um, it's an exponential curve based on powers of 10, maybe it's referred to as the power of H+. But either way, this P um, is a mystery, but the H stands for H plus hydrogen ion. So the pH scale that you are very familiar with is a system for expressing the concentration of hydrogen ions or protons in a solution. And again, this is expressed in molarity or moles per liter. So if you are looking at an acidic solution, an acidic solution will have a very low pH value, so a pH typically less than 7, because it has a very high hydrogen ion concentration. This may seem sort of counterintuitive that you have a low pH for a high concentration. But remember, logarithms are exponential, so they're sort of the opposite of what you would think. A basic solution is going to have a very high pH value because it has a very low hydrogen ion concentration. Now, you could also calculate the pOH, or really you can calculate the P of any type of ion. And the, what you would substitute is, you would just substitute for the concentration for that ion. So the pH scale, again, that you're probably familiar with, is, we can see down here, is usually represented a scale of 1 to 14. This is based on a... Um, a, basically a reading from a electrical pH meter that, that associates water with a pH of 7. And so the concentration of hydrogen and hydroxide ions um, then sort of branch out by 7 powers to the positive and 7 powers to the, the negative direction. So that's where we get this zero, uh, 1 or 0 to 7 scale and then from 7 to 14 scale. So you, here's your pH scale, and as we see that um, pHs that are less than 7 are acidic, and the more acidic a solution is, the lower its pH value, and the more basic a solution is, the higher its pH value. But what's important to see, um, and why this graphic was chosen, is that it shows that each change in pH is not just even, it's not just a number, uh, a factor of 1, it's actually a factor of 10. So this is, um, for example, pH 6 is exponentially larger than 7. And then a pH 5 is an exponentially larger amount of hydrogen than, five, than um, 6 was. And as you can see, it goes up to the left. And then if we were to look at P, the pOH, the pOH, as you get to the, um, pH 14, the hydroxide concentration is 10 times that what it would be in 13. 
So the pH scale is an exponential scale, um, which is partially, which is why logarithms are used because logarithms are exponential just by their definition. So what is important also to know is that the pH scale is based on the hydrogen ion concentration. So we can look at how hydrogen ion concentration affects the pH and we can also look at how does the fact that a, um, an acid is a weak acid or a strong acid, how does that affect the hydrogen ion concentration? So we're going to look at this, this is a second lab simulation and we're going to look at this one from Chem State, um, from Iowa State uh, Chemistry Department. In this simulation we can test weak acid and a strong acid and we can also change the concentration to see how the pH is affected. So first of all let's look at um, a strong acid and let's look at uh, for example 10 to, uh, one, if we have a molarity of 1 times 10 to the negative 3 um, for this HCl solution we could change the volume but that doesn't really matter. Let's look at what the pH is. We get a pH of exactly 3 and this is what we would calculate if we were using the formula of pH is equal to the negative log of this hydrogen ion concentration. And so because HCl is a strong acid, it is going to uh, dissociate completely. So the exact amount of HCl is going to be the exact same amount of H because every hydrogen that was available in the hydrogen chloride sample is going to have ionized from the sample. So we can compare this to, let's remove the probes, we can compare this to the pH that we would get from a similar volume and a similar molarity of HF. So HF as we know is a weak acid as we looked at in the last lab simulation and we know that all of the HF is not going to dissolve. So even though we have 1 times 10 to the negative 3 molar HF in the solution, not every hydrogen will be released from the HF. So there will not be as much free hydrogen in the solution. And we expect that's going to change the pH. So while the hydrogen chloride that was at the top here gave us a pH of 3, we see that hydrogen fluoride gives us a lower, or I'm sorry, a higher pH number which is less acidic. And that's a reflection of the lower amount of hydrogen ion that is present due to this being a weak acid. Now in your calculations, um, when you do advanced calculations for acids and bases, you will eventually use uh, what's called Ka and Kb, or the dissociation constants, because they have an effect on the pH. However, we're in our calculations, we're not going to take into a, uh, the weak acid or base into account. So as I mentioned earlier, the pH scale, as you already know, is related to the hydrogen concentration and the pOH scale is related to the OH concentration. As we can see by this graphic, the pH is almost the inverse of the pOH. So as you increase in hydrogen concentration, you're going to have a decrease in hydroxide concentration. So um, we can use that to our advantage to make another math equation, which is that the pH plus the pOH is generally going to be equal to 14. So if we want to, if we know one value and want to find the other, we can subtract it from 14. And based on our logarithms, we can also derive the equation that the hydrogen ion concentration multiplied by hydroxide concentration is going to be equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. And again, this is related to the self-ionization of water and the idea that for every OH there is an H. This equation down here, the 1 times 10 to the 14, is also called the ion product constant of water and we're going to be using K, other K numbers. You could also have um, a dissociation constant for acid and base that I have mentioned, Ka and Kb, um, and this is related to that. This is just sort of the K of water. In our next slideshow, in our next lecture, we're going to look at how we can use these equations to do various calculations.